Hi everyone, this is Prasad again and welcome to the Lead Code JavaScript 30 days challenge. So now if you go here, uh, you can actually see uh, today we are coming with a new one uh, called uh, 2623 Memoise 1. We are doing it 30 days of JavaScript in the lead code, sir, in that we are having an another one which is called uh, 2623 Memoise. And in this uh, code, you can actually check it here. Uh, there is a function and in that function, it is having it like they are saying it like the given a function returned a memoized uh, version of that function. It's like remembering. A memoized function is a function that will never be called twice with the same inputs. Instead, it will return a cached value. Let's take it as sum. For example, you are calling it uh, a sum function with the two, three values. That's right. And then you got it some two plus three, which is five. Imagine I'm calling the same sum function with three, two. It will be called again. In that cases, what will happen? The same function is calling twice, even though it expects the same output. It will get the same output. Imagine there is one function. Uh, it calls some API links. It has to go to some particular API and it has to get the re result. Like when I type a movie name, it has to get the movie's uh, image. When I type it a movie name, and it will go to the request and it will bring the result. Imagine I'm doing the same movie name again if i call the same movie name again again it will go to the request and again it will bring it the same instead instead if whatever the inputs i gave it will check it and it will store it somewhere and it will think it like if the same inputs if the guy is entering the same movie again instead of checking it again the api it can bring out the same results which is stored right that is called memoized versions of functions usually closures we use it this concept much now uh, let's see what they are exactly asking us to implement here they are asking us to uh, assume it like three input possible functions like sum fab and factorial okay if you want to just cut out all short you can directly go out to input and output things so that you will understand better easily Whenever you are in lead code, to understand it better, either read the question in detail with the editorial or directly check the inputs and outputs and then start checking it here, the uncommenting the logic so that you will understand it better. Now see, I'm just going here, a function named sum and the actions I'm calling it function two times, uh, which is like again get call count, which is like how many times I called it will come. So, but if I do this, uh, call, call, it's like two times I just called. So, the count has to be like kind of two. But interesting point here. See here. Now, here, uh, let's call count. There is something called call count here, zero. And if I go here, one memoized function, if I go inside this function, I'm incrementing call count one. So, it's like if I call this function one time, one value will increase. So it's returning something, whatever the function you like it. Initially two comma three it went. So it will go and it will bring the result five, which is very simple. And now call count is one. But next time when it goes, it should bring the result five, but the call count should be one. Why? Because it should not call the function. It should give the same result because earlier also I gave the same inputs. That is what we are going to implement. This is also called the kind of cache memory which we will do the cache memory kind of logic let let's take a basic cache which we can take it kind of empty object and here uh, we can return a function inside this if if uh, whatever the arguments you are taking on whatever the arguments i am taking on is that arguments whatever the arguments I am taking on is that arguments are inside the cache that means whatever the inputs every time I'm storing the inputs if the inputs were same inputs I'm storing in a key value pair if the inputs were stored then I will bring the output which is a key of that particular value but if that uh, key is not there okay imagine if it is already there that means in the cache it is already containing so i will not call the function i will directly call i will directly call here the cache of uh, whatever the arguments you have 
else imagine i didn't have the uh, you know the value inside the cache like the, it's the first time i'm calling that particular function okay so in that case what it should happen let's take it like i am calling the function which is fn and i'm doing passing the arguments fn and i am making this whatever the answer i got it or whatever the answer i got it i am storing this answer in the cache ox so what will happen inside the cache object the with the key value of ox with the key value of ox the function returned value will be stored for example if the key value is 2 comma 3 then answer will become 5 it will store it already the next time when you are going into the 2 comma 3 input then it will check it like is the 2 comma 3 available there yes it is available there so it will return 5 instead of calling into this instead of going into the next one so here i'm gonna return it return cache ox this one you may implement it in a more simpler way where you can uh, have it like some kind of uh, you know uh, implementing the else logic first and the if logic in the return or kind of having in a ternary logic okay so you can implement it in multiple ways but this one is actually kind of good and also if you remember we discussed something called closures in our previous classes you can even check it on this is actually the basic concept of class uh, uh, concept of the caches here the inner functions are written uh, uh, remembering the outer functions values uh, usually the main use of the cache we can uh, closure we can use it in this particular caching techniques only so let's see whether it works it's running so the cache it brings out go here so here two only two or two dots it is three three dots so it's like the uh, rest operator so it has to be passed with three dots where it will accept it all okay so if you just check it upon you will and uh, you you can submit the things okay just uh, try to check it more and more lead code problems so that you will understand the javascript functional programming in a more better way you can always follow us and you can check it on our other videos of lead code so that you will understand the javascript well thank you all